In 2021, it was James Gunn's turn to try his hand at the Suicide Squad franchise. I won't bore you with the details since I already reviewed it here on the channel. Also, I barely remember anything from that review, but I do remember that I ended up liking the movie quite a bit. I also remember Margot Robbie having really nice theatrical presence on screen. Don't judge me! I know, I know, the joke wasn't funny then, and it's probably not funny now. Whatever. Since that movie has come out, I have noticed several months later that a lot of people really like James Gunn's take on the Suicide Squad, including people who don't normally like quote-unquote cape shit. In fact, the only people I really noticed who hate on this movie with a burning passion are the same kind of people who tell you that Justice League belongs in a museum and that Zack Snyder has the most delicious penis in Hollywood. Side note, am I the only one who's convinced that the Snyderverse fandom might be a cult? Like, I mean this in the most nicest, most outsider-looking-in kind of way possible, but like... You should invoke the name of James Gunn on Twitter sometime and watch how many people will quote statistics at you and talk about how James Gunn has dumbed down the art of the superhero movie. It's like, <sighs> shut up. <laughs> but hey, I'm not here to poke at the hornet's nest that is the Snyderverse fandom. I'm here to talk about Suicide Squad and the series that eventually came forth from the Suicide Squad, HBO Max's new original series, Peacemaker. Who is Peacemaker? Well, aside from the fact that he's portrayed on screen by John Cena, fuck if I know. I don't know who he is. I didn't really know who he was before Suicide Squad. I never bothered looking into him in the interim between Suicide Squad and this past weekend. I just know that he's a DC Comics character who exists and apparently loves peace so much that he'll kill as many women and children as it takes to get it. His words, not mine. I can't remember the last time I have laughed this hard at anything superhero related. And Lord knows Marvel has tried. Believe me, Marvel tries so hard. They cram jokey joke, hokey jokey material everywhere they can. Even when it's not supposed to be hokey and jokey. When it's supposed to be dead serious. Because nobody is allowed to be 100% serious in Marvel. Meanwhile, DC Comics has to be 200% dead serious to be like, We're not your dad's comic books, man. We're edgy and we're dark, man. You know what I'm saying. I've only seen the first three episodes as of this recording, basically because there are only three episodes available, but of the three episodes I've seen, I feel like this show captures the right balance. Like, it is action-packed, but it doesn't take itself too seriously like a lot of DC stuff usually does. But it never falls into the territory of, okay, you don't have to tell jokes here at any point like it does with Marvel. Most of the time. <laughs> if this show has done absolutely nothing else, it has accomplished something I thought would never happen back in 2010. It has gotten me to like something featuring John Cena. I'm gonna have to check the outdoors to see if the rapture has taken place because... This is the kind of thing that's written in the Book of Revelations. John Cena and something good? I mean, what's next? The Bengals winning the Super Bowl? Oh, man. I will say I'm genuinely interested, three episodes in, I'm genuinely interested in seeing what they do with these butterflies, as they're called. Although they look more like wasps to me, but eh, potato, potato, who cares? I'm genuinely interested in seeing where they go with this and what becomes of it and what Amanda Wall Waller... Waller? Yeah, Amanda Waller's involvement in all of this is because it's Amanda Waller. She always has involvement in some way, shape, or form. Are we sure she's on the good guy's side? And I'm not even saying that as, like, somebody who's ignorant of DC continuity. I'm saying that as somebody who's watching this show and who's seen the Suicide Squad and who's hearing all these people talk about the stuff she's done, and I'm like, she's a good guy, right? Bottom line, this show is holding my attention, and I look forward to seeing where it goes from here. This might actually seem strange, but I'm actually going to withhold my score for the time being because the show is incomplete. And I know it seems kind of like a hypocritical thing to do, considering I've made reviews of shows based entirely on three episodes or less, maybe more, but I've never finished the series. Well, the thing is, things like hoops or... 
things like brand new cherry flavor and stuff like that, I can kind of tell what direction they're going. I'm not entirely sure where they're going with this one. And there's only three episodes, so I have to wait around like everybody else to see where it goes, so... It seems uh, like it would behoove me to at least wait and see where things go before I give an official score. However, for the sake of this review, I will say I'm enjoying it, I recommend it, and I think you should check it out too. And I'll see you guys on the next review. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until next we meet.